So now you have one person in the car that's still alive, Keefe D. That's it. The Keefe D tapes get released. Correct. And then the murder rap documentary comes out. Right. Originally, when Keefe D did the confession, did he assume that this would be like sealed up and never see the light of day? Absolutely. I believe that was his mindset, is that uh, it would never come out. Okay. Yeah. But it comes out. And I doubt that he even knew that it was recorded. You know, he probably was unaware of the fact that it was being recorded. Oh, so there wasn't a tape recorder right there when... No. Oh, it was like a hidden recorder? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So he was being secretly recorded by, by the police while, while giving his confession? Yeah. Okay, and that's legal? Oh, absolutely. All day long. <laughs> All day long. <laughs> yeah, when you go into a police interview room, you better expect that there's a recording going on. And you're not going to see the recorder, but it's... Oh, you know, wow. Oh, yeah. that's how it's done these days. Watch any crime documentary and you're sitting there watching videotape of a guy being interviewed and a, that guy doesn't necessarily know that there's a videotape on. Okay. Was he videotaped or just audio recorded? Uh, just audio recorded. Yeah, because we did the, it wasn't at the police station. We actually did the interviews at his lawyer's office. And you guys just had tape recorders on you? I mean, recording equipment yeah, on you? Little, yeah, small little concealable recorders. Got it. Mm-hmm. These tapes come out. Mm-hmm. What you actually, before... Releasing these tapes, you actually go and meet up with Keefe D. Right. How did that conversation go? As expected, you know, I knew that we needed to kind of be really direct with him, let him know that what, uh, what he was facing as far as the case we built against him, and to give him the option of cooperating. You know, my objective throughout this whole thing was not to put a drug case on Keefe D. My objective through this whole thing was to solve the murder of Tupac and, and, and Biggie. And so, but that was a, a device or a tool that we used in order to, you know, to, to accomplish that objective. So we go, KFD, here's the deal. We've been listening to your phones. We've been tracking you. We've got intercepting drugs. We're intercepting money. We have informants. We have an airtight case against you. You need to call your attorney and come meet with us and have a conversation. So that afternoon, we all end up in Los Angeles. He has his attorney. We're at the U.S. Attorney's office. Sit down. The prosecuting attorney, Tim Seawright, Keefe's attorney, Wayne Higgins. They compare notes, and Keefe D and his attorney go off and have a conversation. They come back and say Keefe D wants to cooperate. So let's start scheduling interviews. Right, but but what I'm saying is fast forward, however many years you actually tell Keefe D, you meet with Keefe D and say, I'm about to release these tapes. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, but, um, yeah so before, um, right when I was publishing the book, I didn't tell him I was going to come out with the tapes. I just told him I was publishing a book um, based on the investigation, including his confession. And so I tell him that. We're sitting in my truck. We're down in front of his house in uh, Corona, California. I was like, here's the deal, Keefe D, you know, I'm retired, I'm going to release a book, it's going to detail everything that happened in the investigation, including what you had to say, I just want to give you a heads up, because who knows, you know, what the consequences of the, all this will be, and he says, hey, bring it on, I'm a gangster, I can deal with this shit. Were you armed when you went to go meet with Keefe D to tell him this? Mm, probably, I don't, I okay. don't specifically remember, but I was always really kind of complacent about that. Sometimes I had guns, sometimes I didn't. Like when we were in his garage that one day initially when we first confronted him, I didn't have a gun on me. Thankfully my partner did. <laughs> okay. But you know, just I didn't do police work that way. It's really low key, which is not the way you should be doing it, by the way. I mean there there's no fear of like, hey, when I tell this guy that I'm about to release these tapes, he might try to kill me. Yeah, probably um, I mean obviously I'm smart enough to recognize that that's a possibility. Um, yeah, I probably had a gun. I may have had one, you know, under the, who knows? I don't remember, to be yeah. honest with you. But certainly, I'm aware of what he's capable of. But I also understand that we've built a rapport. You know, I've interviewed him. And, uh, and there's, to some degree, a mutual, exp you know, respect. And, uh, you know, is he going to really just pull out a gun and shoot a guy in front of his house who's a retired cop? and bring all of those problems upon himself. So these tapes come out, and now everyone, there wasn't any sort of gray area or conspiracy theory talk when it came around that. It was, you know, it was like, okay, that's Keefe D. Like, I've, I've interviewed people 
who who knew Keefe D, right. you know, and I played them the tape, and they're like, that, that's that's Keefe D. Yeah, it, it wasn't like that's someone else on tape. This whole mm -hmm. thing is a Hollywood production used to sell right. books. It was established across the board that this is Keefe D confessing to all this. Most certainly. Did you speak to Keefe D after the tapes were released? No. No. I've spoken to him actually a couple yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess a number of people have. Yeah. Um, yeah, clearly, he would not trust having a conversation with me anymore because he knows I'm going to tape it and release it. <laughs> right. So, yeah, but, uh, I just, you know, he's, he's become vocal about it. He's, right. he's not running and hiding from what he said. It's funny because I get accused of, of being the police <laughs> and everything else like that. And, and I explain to people that, you know, when you do an interview with me, you're wearing a wire that you put on yourself. Right. <laughs> you run it under your own yeah. shirt and there's another one pointing at you right now. Right. And there's two video cameras pointing right. at you. There's no gray area on whether or not you're being taped or not. Exactly. You, on the other hand, are actually taping conversations secretly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is standard procedures in yeah. law enforcement. You know, there's no expectation. And now here it's clear. You're, you've got cameras. You know what's going on. Yeah. But in the law enforcement environment, in the police environment, you don't have an expectation of privacy. You know that you're being investigated. You know yeah. that it's for a reason. And you know they're going to use that information if they can. Yeah. So there's no expectation of privacy, which allows us to secretly record you know, legally.